welcoming you back to the desk of Cadicorus. Join us as we partake into a new installment of Current Quickies. Hello my duckies, and this time we're going to be having a look at Dying Light. Oh. The game hasn't had a box release in the UK yet. Ah. Well, looks like we're going to have to use our imagination. Cure. This game here is pretty good. Funnily enough, I had read and seen a lot of Dying Light before its release, and I wasn't interested in the slightest to actually get it. But then the good folk at Techland were kind enough to give me a review code of the game for PS4, so I decided to give it a try after that. But the question is, how was it then? Well... This game is so much goddamn fun. Dying Light, where maybe yet another goddamn game about zombies made by the same people behind Dead Island, which I didn't like, actually gave me hours of enjoyment from all the interesting mechanics that it splices with classic first-person survival gameplay. Presentation-wise, the game looks absolutely marvellous and runs really smoothly on PS4. And I also love the soundtrack in the game, especially the occasional atmospheric 80s techno style synth pieces that perfectly match with the situations you find yourself in whenever you're wandering alone in the zombie-filled wasteland. Speaking of the zombie-filled wasteland, the design of this game is also something to behold. This is a first-person open-world zombie sandbox game, which could have been relatively stock and simple to make. But instead, this game has a lot of focus with Mirror's Edge-styled parkour, meaning the design of the areas that you explore are entirely built around free and it's done beautifully with everything designed around you being able to free run absolutely anywhere you want to in the smoothest ways possible. Even executing first person free running better than Mirror's Edge in my opinion, and not to mention not even slightly linear and in an open world. There are hundreds of ways to traverse and explore the same areas in the beautiful yet haunting landscape with all the different ramps, soft landing zones, places to climb, buildings to run along, platforms to skip across, and so much more. And the sublime control of this game only makes it feel more natural. Your character, Crane, has a fantastic balance of weight and superhuman agility, making every single long jump and last minute ledge grab extremely tense and satisfying to nail. And the button placement on the DualShock 4 makes even the trickiest of platforming very easy to grasp, but very tricky to master. Basically, this game has the best first person parkour system I've ever played through. And the fact that every single little thing you do combat and agility wise makes your skill meter visibly go up makes it all the more satisfying. The survival aspects as well I found to be completely solid. When you begin the game you're as weak as an old stick, all the weapons you find do little to no damage, everything breaks extremely quickly, any death you suffer makes you lose skill points, crafting materials are difficult to find, and because of all that, exploring the big open world can become extremely tense in the early stages, making any gun and ammo that you find later on in the game feel like a godsend. But not make you feel overpowered because any loud noise you make attracts faster and deadlier zombies to fight or run away from. For the majority of the game you will be using melee weapons, but for both types of weapon they are extremely satisfying to use and the feedback you get from using either weapon makes you feel so goddamn good. Not to mention whenever night time hits when you're exploring around you get stalked and attacked by the fastest and most relentless types of zombie in the game, the Volatiles, and any mission that involves needing to be done at night can be genuinely scary just because of that, especially in a pursuit. And not to mention being lost and scrambling through the dark can get your heart racing. This game doesn't go softly on you when you make mistakes, since you do die pretty easily from a horde of zombies or even falling from a successful free run, which is great to see come back in games nowadays with survival horror aspects. And the little details like being tripped up by zombies can make you panic slightly because of that. And the fact that most of this game places these zombies fucking everywhere only adds to the panic. The crafting system is solid, the trading system is solid, the story missions are varied, the fallout-like aspects of the apocalyptic open world are solid, the safe house and airdrop system were a lovely touch, and I also love the way that you can bump into other random survivors while running around, meaning that you can choose to help them for rewards or leave them to die for fear of dying yourself, making the open world of Haran itself feel much more alive than undead, and more exciting to parkour around because of that. Whew. However, I do have my fair share of problems with this game. <gasps> The first thing I mentioned is that the side quests you get given are quite unimaginative, with many, if not most of them, requiring the exact same task solving a basic pick up item and drop it off style to accomplish them. And secondly, well, okay, for anyone that has played this game yet, say it with me now. The, the plot fucking sucks. sucks! I'm not gonna dance around the bush with all of you with this. I wish I could have been one of those people that thought the plot was good or at least okay, but unfortunately, I found this game's story and characters to be some of the worst I have ever played through in any blockbuster video game. The dialogue is poorly written and boring, the characters are all stereotyped and forgettable, your main character is basically Chris Redfield because there is absolutely no difference in inflection with the voice actor, the cutscenes are all slow and uninteresting, the voice acting, especially for British characters, is hilariously bad half the time and the main plot itself deals with everything that we've seen a thousand times over like the big corporation that only seems to care about the business and screw the little people the big bad guy that runs the wastelands out of fear and only wishes for chaos to rule over the world the girl character who resents you because you caused her closest companion to die but then ends up falling for you and of course the fact that this is yet another zombie apocalypse game in which a group of survivors are trying to find a cure and seriously all of this wouldn't have bothered me if the game was well written but it really isn't and so when the writing completely fails you at least hope that the game has fun with itself every so often but it takes itself so goddamn seriously that it hurts it forces all of the story elements and characters down your throat tries its hardest to make you feel emotions towards certain character deaths and if this was cliched and cheesy but lighthearted and ridiculous like Resident Evil, I wouldn't have minded even slightly, but instead the lack of originality is only heightened more by how serious and boring the whole story presents itself. And spoiler alert. Okay. I will say that is most apparent in the museum hallucination scene. My god, if you guys watched me play that on a stream, you'd know how awfully done that entire scene was in terms of design and character development. And it was actually so bad that it was completely hilarious. Not to mention the ending was really bad with a bad quick time boss fight and unsatisfying conclusion that really put a damper on anything that I really loved experiencing with the gameplay. Oh, and with any side characters that I talked to, I ended up skipping through their entire conversations because of how boring and stale the voice acting and dialogue was itself. And it's things like this that not made me give a single crap about all the side missions that I completely ignored. Because let's be honest, if the side missions are boring and then the character interactions you get before and after the side missions are boring, then what the fuck's the point? Not a good sign at all. In conclusion, 
conclusion, though luckily Dying Light I found to be more good than bad. I thought the parkour system was the best I've ever played through in a first person game, especially for an open world. The survival aspects were fucking solid, fighting your way through the hundreds of zombies with melee weapons or guns is extremely satisfying and tense. It looks good, sounds good, the game itself is extremely fun and I personally think it's worth it on those merits alone. The plot may be goddamn awful in my opinion and the side quest pretty uninspired, but personally I think the main chunk of the gameplay itself pulls it through all those things to make it a memorable experience. If you want my advice, all I'll say is wait for a price drop before picking this game up, and if you do, just have fun with it. Not to mention, if you're a masochist, you may find some of the story and characters so bad that they're incredible, which only makes you enjoy and appreciate those special moments a little bit more when you get fed up with the plot. And come on, drop kicking zombies never gets old. <laughs> This game gets a 7 out of fucking 10. Kill. Hello there everyone and thanks so much for watching my Dying Light video. If you enjoyed it then please consider hitting that little like button and maybe even subscribing to my channel because I upload two videos every single week. How exciting is that? Also if you look at the description you'll find all my social media links, Facebook, Twitter and even my Twitch page whenever I do streaming. And um, you'll also find my Games Grabber collection down there so if you want to see what games I'm buying, what games I'm playing, what games are on my shelf right this second, updated on a daily basis, you can have a look at that little link in the description there to find out all of that stuff. And I'd also like to give a quick shout out and huge thank you to my top donators on I'm Raising, so you guys thank you so much. I'm Sam from Freak Zone Games and Super Darth Vader 1. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And like always, if it is your birthday today or watching this video, then happy freaking birthday to you, and please remember to stay beautiful.